So we're going to move on to Respect My Philosopher in the chapter I asked you to read about labor and immigration, and then we'll watch Last of the Mexicans. Okay? So um, what this book chapter does is it talks a lot about a labor theory of value. Now, I'd ask you to watch a little video on labor theory of value. May have been hard to watch, okay? Um, that ec economist is kind of boring. But basically, how you can think of a labor theory of value, which was Mark, one of Marx's idea, is how much a commodity, commodity or service is, is bought or sold for in a marketplace is a highly subjective um, thing. And it's often related to the amount of labor that goes into producing this good or service. Now, anything beyond the cost of labor and materials, which is also often thought of to be labor because there's labor that goes into making the materials, etc. Anything beyond paying for that stuff is surplus value, is profit that goes to the capitalist. So Ewing talks a lot about a labor theory of value and many of the things like, you know, we define ourselves by our labor. What did you do? Okay. If someone asked me, I'm, I'm a college instructor. I identify with my labor. That's not what I would answer, but a lot of people do. I'm a teacher. I'm a firefighter. I'm a, you know, a postal carrier. I'm a this or that. Like, not maybe I'm a dad or, you know, I'm an acrobat or whatever, whatever it is like you like to do for fun or, you know, or I'm a Taurus or whatever, whatever it is, you know, like when people ask that question, you identify through your labor and it's a very abstract um, thing but there's a lot like our labor means a lot in various ways okay so a little bit more like Ewing talks about how Marx never really got into um, race and ethnicity and labor um, it didn't seem to be a major concern of, of his again that may have a lot to do with being German in the sense of like being in a very white country right and then being in um, England, again, very white in the, in the 1800s. Um, and so, um, but he did speak out against like slavery in the United States and, 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 and some other, other um, racialized labor and, you know, exploitation of human bodies, which he was against, but race never and ethnicity were never like major elements of his works. I think he'd probably have a lot more to say about that if he was alive now drinking whiskey and smoking opiates. Um, but, um, basically, you know, regardless of, of gender or ethnicity or, 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 or race, ah, um, you know, uh, all we really have is our labor power. Now, labor power is a very simple concept. It's what the capitalists buy, you know, is essentially, um, you know, our time and, our power is in our, our labor. That's why when people say they're going to, or, you know, teachers are going to strike or G's are going to strike, right? Well, that shows the, the value of their labor to those who are exploiting them or they feel like they're being exploited, okay? And what we see is, is we see how labor power, the power of labor, right? The ability, our time, our ability to sell our time so someone can make profit off it, surplus value off it, manifests in Last of the Mexicans as it relates to ethnicity, specifically uh, Mexican-American ethnicity, okay? So here's some important ideas about Marx and labor. Um, again, like I said, it's how we create our social, social and cultural worlds. Um, so many of the things that we identify with are through our labor or the labor of others. The music, the movies, the video games are created through labor exploitation of other people. Um, and we identify with those things right and we work in our own labor we sell our own time that someone exploits and makes profit off of so we can enjoy those those texts right but this is so important this is how we create our identity i'm a i'm a carpenter i'm an electrician i'm a truck driver um you know i'm a model uh i'm an actor you know uh, i'm a video game coder right like like we identify through our work through our labor how we sell our time um which is really important it's one of the ways that we interact with nature. Um, this is a little bit more of an older concept because um, now it's maybe not as same, but a lot of our interaction with um, 
the material world with dirt, with wood, with um, you know other natural materials, specifically in the 1800s, you know, was through our la like our labor. You know, um, we're farmers, we're carpenters, etc. We're you know lumberjacks, you know, um, etc. That's how we interact with nature, um, and that our labor is you know what basically is bought and sold. Um, I think that's really important. It produces commodities that are bought and sold, and those commodities or services are bought and sold in a marketplace. But labor also in itself is a commodity, okay? Which is really important. It's what you have is your labor. It's all you, all you really have. So what makes the value of a commodity, okay? Often the labor theory of value posits that it's the amount of labor relatively that went into making the good or service, okay? Um, other things that play into effect here, and you see this in the Economist video, is use value. How, how useful? What's the social, cultural um, value of what's being made? Um, how essential is it to society? Okay. Um, then you have exchange value. Um, so this looks at like the skilled or unskilled or the, the labor, the type of labor and the materials that go into producing the good or service. And then we have surplus value, which I've talked about, which is the profit, right? This is, and this is key to Marxism and just thinking critically about, about labor. It's like, this is where exploitation has. You work for 10 hours, you're paid $50. What you're, and, and uh, after, you know, all, all costs are accounted for, what you produce is worth $55, but the capitalist sells it for $200 you have been exploited out of, you know, whatever, $150. This is where your labor is exploited. You don't get to share the profits. You don't get to enjoy the fruits of your own labor, right? This labor, um, you know, it, this is where like a very key part here. And what capitalists try to do, right, is obviously reduce the value of your labor, work you harder for less money, right? Which increases what? the amount of profit they can make off of you. So it's all, capitalists are always try, trying to drive down the actual costs of what they're making, usually by cutting wages, cutting workers, and then asking workers that continue to work harder for less or for equal, right? From, which equates to more exploitation, okay? Those who control labor, and this is what Ewing says, and this is, you know, an idea is that, you know, um, Labor power creates social class and it maintains uh, class power. This is really just like an important concept is like, if you can control labor power, right? If you can control your laborers, right? You can create social, you, you, you create social class. This is why you have, you know, companies that, you know, are very anti-union um, like Amazon or, or whatever um, is because they're trying to control their labor. They're trying to reduce the power of the laborers and control them. And that's a very important, important part. Um, he also talks about the constructed meanings of bodies, racialized, gendered bodies, which plays, um, you know, an important um impact on this like you know where you know female workers are statistically paid less for the same amount of work as men uh, african-american workers are you know statistically paid less than you know white workers for the same type of labor um, and this is something marx never got into but like it's important to note that you know labor is is racialized it's it's gen gender dyed um, you know, F, F, it has ethnic meanings, and these are all, all often socially constructed again, um, which is really just important to think about. That bodies are socially constructed, um, what it means to be a woman, what it means to have a certain skin color, what it means to um, partake in a certain culture or be part of a certain ethnic group. These, these are often socially constructed, not only what it means for the people that are part of those groups, but what it also means for those who are in the out group, you know, how they, how they, they construct and how the media constructs um, race and constructs gender, etc. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break here for a second. We're going to pop into Last of the Mexicans, which kind of brings a labor theory of value and ethnic or ethnicities 
into the discussion of class exploitation.